Okay, now hello and welcome back everyone. Today I'm Kevin from Game Game C and I now have this old rig type. So I have this small Chinese tripod, not the normal man photo, and I have this another lens. Today I'm gonna be sharing this uh, yeah, Shika ML Japan 50mm f1.4. What's wrong with this? This thing has this issue where I have some funky and the focus, the, I mean the aperture does not turn. Let me show you the funky, it's right in the middle right there, I think, yeah. If you can actually see, actually it's all over the back element and also some in the middle of the front element thingy. Like I mean back, like I mean it's on the element in front of the aperture or behind the aperture on there, yeah. So I'm gonna be cleaning that. Then also I have this, which is the aperture that does not turn, see? That's not wiggle at all. It's like solid. I assume this thing has some crease that's stuck inside. So I'm gonna open this thing up now. First, I'm gonna tell you that these rings are pretty rubbish because these are adapters to the EOS mount and they only clip in like this with like one small clip right here. Yeah? So if you have one lens that has some stiff focus, it will slide out. Let's put it over here for a while. Put the body, I mean the lens cap over there. Then let's open the pack because this thing, I'm gonna tackle the aperture issue first. So now let's take some screwdrivers. Try the big one first. Fits, good enough. Let's take now the rear shroud thingy out. You must be careful not to like jolt the thing into the lens because then you'll damage the lens. Let's put this over here. Let's find some tray, yeah. So let's put this thing in some small tray if I have one. Not sure if I have one, let's put it over here into the cup, second screw Yashica range finders like to like gum up I'm not sure if the Yashica ML lenses are that that easy to gum up so that's what I'm gonna find out today I think yeah these screws are going out nice but Yashica's like to play with you a lot so let's hope nothing happens really yeah first I'm gonna do this so I'm gonna hold this this is the top this top bit aligns with this top screw which has this lock and this lock aligns with this unmoving pin thing right here and now let's see if I can remove this thing so let's see if applying it out will help that's now out put here yeah. let's put these three screws into here now this thing does not budge, this thing will move, this thing also does not budge. Next let's remove the mounting screws, let's use this bigger screwdriver for more torque, yeah. Okay, that's one down. These are not very tight, so I think this is gonna be a pretty good day, hopefully. At least I hope, yeah, because I can't guarantee anything with these old lenses. And so let's hope it's only like some grease holding in the aperture ring, because that's like the best case scenario on this thing. Just like that. Now, Make sure that you remember the orientation of these things, yeah? So, the line, red line, one focus. There we go. Red line goes on the red, I mean this screw, which goes in front of this locking bit. This goes in front of the prong on the ring right there, yeah? Now this is not coming out which signifies that this thing is sort of gummed up. Let's try prying this thing off, yeah? There we go. Let's 
This ring still does not want to turn. I'm not really sure though if this has to turn. I, no, I think this thing only has to turn, yeah. So this is probably gummed up on this bit right here. You can see this guide not turning at all. This thing probably holds the aperture clicking, no. So this thing holds the aperture clicking mechanism. Now what I'm gonna do is I think some part fell out. No. Let's try to like pull this thing out if I can. If I can, then I'm gonna put some solvent in there and hopefully solve the issue. Hmm. How about this optic then? Doesn't twist out. Okay. Let me cut this video out first so I don't run off battery and continue off where I finish. I think I'm gonna put some solvent in here and see how that works and tell you how I fix the issue yeah so yeah gonna be back okay so I got a new idea which is to like <clears throat> to like what you call this thing take the ring the front ring apart also and then I'm gonna reach the inside so first I'm gonna have some marker so let me go take a marker yeah this should be permanent marker Let's mark this guy, this screw hole, okay, should be enough. So this screw hole has to be aligned with this red stripe right here, this like line. So then, once we do that, let's unscrew the side holes. This is one, this is number two. And here's number three. So I think it only has three little side screws, so little small crab screw thingies. Now this should fall apart, let's see. If it doesn't, then let me collect the screws, yeah? So this, let's just go here, push this away. Make sure not to drop these things, because you're gonna lose them. There you go, that's one. Here's two, and here's three. Once you do that, push the screws away. Make sure they don't get away. Yeah? Then you can probably like, get the front ring off. No? That thing also seems stuck, so I think those two are like glued in. Or at least the front ring is glued in to the back ring. For some reason, yeah. Let's see if I can slit some paper in. So let's find some paper there. Yeah? Wait for a while. Paper is here, okay. Oh, um, let's get some scissors. Scissors. Can I get a small cut of my book yeah? So, get a small cut. There you go. Then let's slit this thing open, yeah? So, slit this thing. Let's see how much dirt is in there. It has some black stuff in there, which is not a good sign. Black stuff usually is sticky stuff, so it's like this disgusting grease that's stuck and that's what you don't want see black stuff so this grease is holding it in I think and stopping us from getting to the rear bit things are still holding in properly so not sure how it's possible yeah. it's all still aligned Doesn't budge for some reason, yeah. So let's 
try the solvent method. So first, let's put some acetone in there, along some gas. Take a Q-tip. Let's take a fuzzy one so I can destroy some good ones. Like this one. Then let's ready out some wood to put the Q-tip on, yeah? So it's not gonna hit my table. Then put all the phones away from the gas so you don't accidentally spill some gas on your phone. Your cameras also take them away. Let's soak this guy in gas. Now let's pour this stuff in. Let's hope that it seeps through the back so it's gonna just fall out essentially. So I'm gonna continue doing this while you wait. I'm gonna pause this video, yeah. Hey, guess what? This thing now is fixed. See, I cannot twist the aperture. Only thing is not clicking because obviously this thing has a lot of grease. So I'm gonna find a way to like take this ring off if possible, yeah. Which I'm not sure is possible, but let's just try. So not full of this grease. I mean, full of this grease and gas. I'm gonna have to work the thing along, yeah, like this, until it totally frees out the jamming stuff. And I think there's some set screw or something holding it in, cause this thing is not coming out that easily. So let's first close the thing. I mean, close the gas, and now I have a fully functioning lens. See, nice. So now let's look this thing out and see if I can like find a way to detach this thing from the lens itself. This thing seems okay. This part seems wiggly. This part seems wiggly. Seems like it's held in by this ring right here. It's now turning freely. And it is now sort of separating so I can like wipe off this crease. Just like that, yeah. I think I can just like wiggle the grease out. Up to the point that I can access it from the edges. And at that point I can like wipe out the grease. See? So that's why you don't use like this rubbish black crease in lenses because then you like end up get gumming things up. The aperture blades are pretty smooth. Although pretty heavy still, yeah, so. And the front ring is also wobbling out. But I think I'd lock it now right here, yeah, because it is obviously okay enough for me. This thing is not coming out for some reason, but I think this should be enough. So a little bit more gasoline, and I think I'm done. Now for this, I'm gonna continue on with the video where I clean the aperture. I mean the the optics, yeah. So wait for me. Okay, so we're back now. Let me go take some tissue, yeah. Um, take the tissue. So now I have fixed the aperture. I've screwed the three grub screws back in. Now everything works, yeah? Good. Still clicks. Everything is fine. Now let's fix the fungi problem. So the fungi is in the back group because when I close the aperture, I can actually still see the fungi, yeah? That's how you see it's in the back or the front. Next, I want to push this stuff away. And for the back group, all I need to do is just twist this guy out, yeah? So you want to focus this thing to infinity so that this thing protrudes out. Then next, you want to clean the table out like this. Make sure it's clean. Make sure your hands are clean. Then unscrew the back optical retain retaining thing. Let's put this thing away first. Thing. 
and so take this guy out then take this guy out slowly gently remember which side they're facing because the back elements usually are pretty hard to like find the orientation yeah then as for this guy so unscrew this thing okay. maybe shit That's a ring. If there's one of these spacers, usually you have to like drop the object out. I totally really like this method, but let's try it. So let's... this thing has one strand of dust. It's on the bottom side there. Yeah. So then what you need to do is you need to like plop this thing out. And there's your piece of glass. Then lay it on a table like this. Well, like this. So I'm gonna put it like this. Then you have this last optical element, which is held by, I believe, yet another spacer. Let's see. Hmm. Might not be yeah. And the fungi is let me go check what surface yeah. I am hoping that it's on the back so I don't need to take the front part. And it's on the front bit. Fuck it. So I have to somehow access the front yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So now let's Blow this guy out. Now I'm gonna leave the rear app optics out while I I don't know talk this thing. Let's see if I can talk it. Yeah. So let's. No, it's not not budging at all. Can I slam this thing on the table? Not gonna work. So this thing's in the front of the aperture. And um, yeah. Heck. So now let's take the front part. To take the front part you have to twist the front front thing out, I believe, yeah. So you push this thing out like this. Then you unscrew the front, just like this. Then you can see that this thing looks like this. Hmm. Take the front thing apart, you can probably just bump it maybe or something. Twist it, okay. That worked. Now let's twist the whole thing out. Make sure not to cut your fingers on the bottom threads because that can be pretty bad or just gloves which I'm not gonna do because I like to feel the thing itself and actually know if it's like moving or if it's like scratching or something like that gloves actually don't give you that feeling so that's why I'm not using them let's put the tissues away That's the front optic out. One big group. Let's see how dirty it is. There is some like fogging stuff like that. It's not fogging, it's like dirt, like yeah, dust. So I'm gonna clean that later, yeah. This temperature, which I have been battling from this morning, more like this few minutes ago, yeah. Then we have this fungi, which I'm gonna clean. So first let's put this phone on the table. And let's get a clean cucumber. In Q-tip, let it go. All you wanna do is just wipe the fungi out. So find where the fungi is and wipe it.
And if it takes too much force to wipe, then it's probably not something you want to remove because then it's probably etching. And that's why I'm gonna stop about everything. There's still this one glob on the side, which I think I might be able to remove with. Let's see if this has a coating. The, it doesn't seem like it has one, which means that it's probably a strong modern coating. Which also means that I probably can like use this Q-tip with some gasoline and dissolve that fungi. Let's dry the Q-tip there first. Okay, dry it out. Then put the gasoline on the optic. Small little bit right there, yeah? Okay. Then <clears throat> use another Q-tip. Like rub the thing. As you can see, this thing does not work. And as I said, if it does not work, then it's probably etching. It's pretty clean right now, yeah? So I'm gonna leave that there. Just say it's etching. Okay, that's good enough. Then next, let's continue with putting the optics in, yeah? So, I'll put it back. I'm not gonna speak while putting the optics in because then I'll put dust inside also, yeah. So do this thing and I'm gonna finish up top. Now the last bits to screw this guy in. So I shake it around so it sits in properly. Then screw the thing in hard. Wait, let's back this thing out for a while. Okay, seems tight. Now this has some dirtiness on the of the lens, let's try and clean this stuff out, yeah? That seems clean, now let's clean the front.
Seems like there's some stuff inside the lens itself. So I think I've got to find a way to like unscrew this optical block. Let's put the lens here first. Close the aperture up so I don't destroy the lens. Okay, so the memory card just filled up. This stupid Panasonic 8GB card. I'm not gonna switch over to this 8GB card from some random brand. I'm gonna clean the front optics. So I think the only way to like access this thing is by turning this real ring. If it's even a ring. Shit, it's plastic, man. What the heck? It's made of plastic. This thing seems clean enough under some random light, but then under this torch, it does seem to have some fungi in there. So let's clean this thing anyway. So I think this is supposed to be clipped out, maybe. I've never seen these like plastic clips in lenses before. Shit. Let's try using this thing to like shimmy this thing up. Nice. Wait, I'm, I'm scared of like hitting the monitor because it's behind me and I don't have the money to buy another 27UL600 every day and so I'm gonna do it down here, yeah. So what you do is just lift the prongs on these things. Let's see if I can make this thing focus. There's little prongs right here, yeah, which you have to like lift and you can lift the optics out. And now I think the optics should just fall out, maybe. Nice, yeah they do, so let's focus back on the floor, I mean on the table. Now let's see if I can make one fall out. Nice. That's like the one left I think, yeah, so let's see how dirty the thing is. Seems clean, this guy seems dirty, yeah, so let's clean this guy. Now this seems pretty pristine, but under the front element there's like one more group which seems dirty. Yeah. Then let's put this optical block back in, or just put this lens piece on top of the optical block. And let's sink, then twist it like this, and clip it back in, just like this. There you go, it's now clipped in, and I think the only way to do is by twisting the front block out, which is not as easily done as it is said. So let's twist this thing, and I'm not sure if I can do it. Let's try putting some gasoline inside the thread or some acetone in this case because it's optics and see if I can actually do stuff with it. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Should be enough. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh shit, drop my foot. Heck. Let's put it there, yeah? And see how well this thing can unscrew. Shit, looks like it's locked in. Hmm. Let's see, I can, I can probably take this thing out with some other methods, like Let's try electrical tape and a wooden block, because this thing seems like the optic is a bit recessed inside the thing And so I can probably use this wooden block and some electrical tape to take this thing out, yeah So a wooden block is pretty slippery, electrical tape is not, so 
I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put some electrical tape on this thing, and then screw it with a wooden block. So now let's do this. Let's find a scissor. With this thing, I'm gonna go over here. Yeah. Then the other side should be about the edge. Okay. So on the edge just like that yeah we cut this thing out so as you can see lens repair is mostly improvising because there's no thing as like the best tool for lens repair it's what you have that's important what did I say <laughs> So now, let's take this thing out. Plop this thing inside this little... What you call this thing? Um, this thing is a uh, tissue and we plop the thing out. There you go. Now, the dirty bits should be in here and on the top surface. No need to remove the bottom because it's already clean from just now. This seems like it has some dirtiness on this side. Let's clean that up, yeah. This side seems like it's not cleaning up. Let's see how clean the side's getting, yeah. Let's turn my screen off. Seems like etching honestly, yeah? no, not fungi, which is both good and bad thing. That means that there's no fungi growing in this thing, but there is <clears throat> gonna be some dirt, I mean some uncleanable stuff in there, so yeah, then okay, let's put this optic back in. Let's screw this thing back in, yeah? So it looks like this, but that should be okay, I think. Nothing too bad. Now let's screw this thing back into the body of the lens. Let's turn off my flash so I don't blind the camera, essentially. Then let's just put this thing here. Should not be cross-threading this guy, yeah? so seems fine. Seems like that's it for the screw. Then let's screw the front ring on. Let's clean the front ring also, yeah, because it's pretty disgusting. Like this side bit over here, yeah. Let's clean this with gas. Okay. Let's first clean the side of this bit right here, yeah. Then clean the small lip. Then once you're done with that, you wanna like wipe the side of this guy. This clean. Go nice. Then you wanna have this thing screw into here. Yeah. And at this point, most people have like forgotten how they put the back. I mean, took the back part. So I'm gonna tell you how. Red line goes on with this guy. This locking bit right there, yeah? Okay. Then for this guy, you wanna like 
I actuated to the best point where it actually fits in. Right there. Find the hole. Right there. Then you want to screw this thing in with these screws. So let's. I think there should be four of them. What the heck's the other one? I'm not sure. Heck, I think I lost one screw. Okay, so um Yeah, lost one screw maybe. It should still hold tight but it's gotta be bad so wait. Is this even the right hole? Let's see. What oh, is okay? So I lost one screw, I think. I'm gonna find that thing after the video. Hopefully, I don't lose it. And yeah, so this is pretty much gonna be the end of the video. Hopefully, you like the video. Do not be like me, do not put your screws in the lens cap and accidentally forget them. Yeah, so then. But at least I remember how I put the thing together so I can actually use the lens right now. Yeah. Put this guy on. What are you? Come on. Where's that lens? Okay, here we go. Lens hole. And then the last screw I have. The other screw cannot be later, yeah? So don't worry about my lens. My lens is gonna be fine. And so after looking everywhere, I keep screws over here on the screwdriver. So let's put this last screw in. And yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. And goodbye, everyone. Now I have a fully functional Yashica ML, which is, let's open the lens up, yeah? To f1.4. With. Okay, and it is clean. So thank you for watching and goodbye.